Thank you very much. Uh, it's my microphone on, I dropped it on the way up. Um, firstly, before I actually start, um, I can't come to a conference about migration as an Australian without acknowledging that the Australian government um, over the last few years has detained thousands of people, including innocent women and children, offshore in detention camps for no other reason than that they sought asylum in our country. And although many have been um, recognised as genuine refugees, um, our government's response has been to lock them up and detain them and to criminalise things like doctors reporting their abuse or the media reporting on the conditions in which they're being held in, in foreign countries on our behalf. So, um, at times I'm very proud to be an Australian and I'm going to tell you a good story from Australia today, um, but I'm not proud of that at all. Um, I, I'm going to talk today about uh, the work that we've been doing with Renew Newcastle in Australia. So, um, Newcastle is a city that you probably have no reason to have heard of. It's important to me because it's where I grew up. Uh, it's a city of about uh, three or four hundred thousand people and once upon a time its uh, big claim to fame was that it was the biggest steel city in Australia. To the extent that this is a story about migration, it's a story about a city from which many people left. Um, in the 1990s, this is what happened to the steelworks. The steelworks closed and uh, over the course of two decades, a city of a few hundred thousand people lost 20,000 jobs and uh, including many young people uh, went further afield, including me, looking to other cities to find work um, and the state of Newcastle was allowed to deteriorate. Um, the work of Renew Newcastle, Renew Newcastle began back in 2008 when I went back to my hometown after living in Melbourne for a period of six or seven years and just saw the state of the main street. As I walked down the two main streets of the city, I, I, I took all of these photos on my camera phone that I had at the time, boarded up buildings, smashed up buildings, empty spaces, vacant spaces, um, so many buildings and uh, so much wasted potential um, I think if you live in a city and that city deteriorates in front of your eyes, it, sort of hap it, it happens sort of shop by shop or building by building. Uh, if you go away and come back, it's like it happens in time lapse, like a, a block that you remember as being very busy and vibrant from when you were there last has suddenly become all boarded up and empty. So this was the state of Newcastle in 2008. And, um, uh, I, I, at the time, I wrote down the addresses and then later I came back and mapped out all of the vacant, derelict and empty buildings in the city. I counted about 150 in the two main streets. Um, one of the big problems with Newcastle has been that there's always a plan. Uh, someone's got a plan. Well, everyone's waiting for the big thing that's going to come from the top down and invest hundreds of million, millions of dollars of, of um, government money or someone else's money. Uh, this is from 2004. I, d I don't know when this is from. There are two. There, for a long time in Newcastle, the biggest industry was architects' impressions of what the city was going to be one day. Uh, in the meantime, not much actually happened. Uh, now, the problem with this is not the, the content. There's some very good things in these plans, but all of these things have one thing in common. They're all looking at the city from the top down. They're looking at it as something that requires lots of money and investment and resources to come in from outside in order to transform it. I have a running joke that the, um, the large-scale revitalisation of Newcastle is two to five years away, and it always will be. <laughs> It's always going to happen, but it's never happening now. So rather than think in terms of the long-term plan and, and what was going to happen two, five, 10, 15 years from now, my obsession was with what was going to happen today, tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that, and to see if we could put together some sort of scheme that could help bring some life and activity back to the city. Um, we started a not-for-profit company called Renew Newcastle and the basic principle is that empty spaces are lost opportunities. Every day a shop or an office or a space sat empty was a lost chance for someone to do something, start something, try something, seed something. Some of which may work, some of which may not. Um, I won't go into all the details, it's a short talk, but basically we, we set up a system to borrow empty buildings from their owners on a rolling 30-day basis to manage insurance, to, ma to make things, uh, make as many things as possible that we could make easy. easy. Um, we, we didn't change any laws, we didn't build anything, we don't buy anything, we don't own anything. 
Um, we've hacked every legal exemption and loopholes based on contracts from how you build mobile phone towers through to um, insurance protocols they've set up for um, markets and other things, and basically set, set about knocking on the doors of the private owners of those empty buildings and attempting to borrow them. We began working in what had once been the vibrant centre of town. Uh, this was uh, back in the day when my grandmother, when I was a little boy, my grandmother would dress up to go shopping in town. It was a big deal. But in 2008, the same area looked like this. It was empty, empty. One guy was there. At the beginning of 2009, we entered into a contract with the private owners of our first set of buildings, and then we began the process of going building by building, block by block, street by street, cleaning them up, fixing them up, lending them to people with creative ideas, community projects and other things so that they could seed their imagination and their ideas into those previously empty spaces. It's been an, an incredibly broad mix. The rule with Renew is that the projects must do something original. They cannot be competing with an existing business in the city and they must make what they do. And we take that to mean a very broad range of things from, from craft and design to sound art, jewellery, uh, software, uh, publishing, designing. This, this space was an old um, former doctor's surgery that was transformed into um, space for uh, uh, startups, laptop based businesses, designers, photographers, people like that. Um, this is the same street uh, that I showed you before where the guy was sitting by himself just six months into the project. We'd gradually begun to open and more and more of these once vacant spaces and use them to seed new projects and new businesses. Um, these guys were running a record label from their bedroom. A lot of our projects are actually people who uh, were already doing something online but didn't have any physical presence. So we started to lend them a shop, we lent them a space, we lent them an office and we gave them a chance to take what might have been a hobby uh, to another level. This guy's an architect. Uh, I just love this, the ceiling is done with uh, fishing net and clothes pegs. Um, just a very simple transformation, that space. These were young boys. The youngest was uh, 17 and the oldest was 21 when they came to us. They designed t-shirts and skateboards and they wanted a space where they could uh, sell the t-shirts and skateboards that they made. And if you'd asked me back then whether I thought that was going to be a viable business, I would have said probably not and I would have been completely wrong, because five years later they are still, they pay, they pay a full commercial lease and they're successfully selling Newcastle t designed t-shirts and skateboards all around the world. Um, these are the same streets. Uh, this is a great example of the resourcefulness of our projects. This is a co-working space, the, this is A-grade office space, so the owner said, you cannot put a nail in the wall, no, no, no hippies, no paint, no mess. Um, so everything in that picture is on a trestle table. It can be picked up, it can be moved. The signage in the window um, is actually, the sign that says roost in the back is actually sitting in the windowsill. Um, and that co-working space has supported, was currently supporting 28 separate businesses as well as being a sustainable business in its own right. Just give you a sense of the flavour of the many projects that we've been involved in seeding and supporting over the last few years. Um, that's a very simple transformation just done with um, uh, old drawers. This is an old department store in the centre of the city that had been uh, left vacant for a long time. We built these very simple petitions about five metres back so that we could um, open up the, the old street windows and take this empty block that had been dead and empty and, and uh, bring it back to life. So we made it home to artisans, designers, photographers. Uh, this, these ladies make kids' clothes. Uh, these, uh, this, is, this is how that block has transformed. This is Newcastle in 2013. These are the same streets. It's now, they're now full of independent local businesses. Um, many of our projects have gone on to become viable. All of the, the green dots on this map are spaces that Renew Newcastle has reopened and transformed from vacant to empty. Uh, from, from, from vacant to, to active. Um, and this is a, this is a, 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 a graph of the rate of um, uh, vandalism in the city. It's been declining by 25.56% per year 
over the seven years since Renew Newcastle started. All up, we've done more than 220 projects. We've reopened 79 properties. The vacancy rates in the city have dropped between 60 and 90%. Half a million more tourists visit Newcastle every year. Two of our projects have gone on to buy buildings. There's more than 60 ongoing businesses that have been started and 27 um, that have signed commercial leases. About 20 places around Australia and around the world are using the model that we developed with Renew Newcastle. I won't dwell on any of these, but these are just photos from different towns and communities across Australia and in some cases internationally where people have been taking vacant space and borrowed space and using it to make things happen. I just want to quickly finish with a couple of um, points about what we're trying to do. Renew is not about pop-ups, it's not about making things look better, it's not about the buzz or the vibe or any of those things. It's about lowering the barrier of entry, lowering the cost and complexity of participation, encouraging creative risk and allowing more people to try more things. Um, it's bending the curve so that more people can take part in changing their city uh, through their actions. I firmly believe that great places come from organic experiments and a city is something we make through our actions. We discover what our cities can be by doing it and Renew is a mechanism for rolling up our sleeves and doing it. Thank you.